Hello and welcome to this taekwondo focused stretching routine. If you have already warmed up, skip to 5 minutes and 12 seconds. Otherwise, let's get started. We're going to start off gently by swinging our legs in all the directions of our normal kicks to loosen up our muscles. So we'll be swinging them to the front, side and back. This is a follow along routine where each section is timed. All you need to do is follow the video. This warm up has been made purposefully intense to get your body to the right level for the deeper stretches. Your body stretches better when warm and you will find that you feel more flexible stretching while warm. Now we're going to switch legs and again swing to the front, side and back. After this set we will do some rapid front kicks. Feel free to do this and all other exercises at a pace that suits you. Coming up next are half turning kicks. You'll start to notice that we're focusing mainly on leg muscles in this warm-up and that's because those are the muscles we really need to stretch. Up next are pop squats. You'll notice that I sound kind of out of breath in the warm-up and that's because I was sat around not doing much beforehand, probably like you guys at home were. And that's no condition to start stretching in, because the risk of injury is much higher. That's why you need to warm up or do a workout beforehand. Up next, we've got reverse lunge front kick. The idea is to switch legs for the front kick each time. Do as I say and not as I do. Up next we have jumping lunges. If you can't do a jumping lunge, a lower intensity alternative is to take an extra hop with both legs in the middle. Another lower impact version would be to do reverse lunges from standing. Up next are curtsy lunges. <clears throat> this one is to give you a brief low intensity round before our final exercise of the warm up, a squat jump combo. This is the last exercise in the warm up, so give it your all. This is a squat jump combined with a tuck jump. A 
only 10 seconds left. We're going to start with middle split stretches. Let's get started with some side lunges. Make sure your foot is pointed forward. This is to mimic a side kick. Now change sides. Now do the side lunge with your foot pointed upwards. This is to mimic the standing leg of a kick. Now gently change back and forth between different sides of the side lunge with your foot pointed upwards. Now we're going to do an Asian squat, which is essentially a low squat where you try to turn your hips out. Don't worry if you can't squat that low at first, it takes time to get flexible. Use your elbows to push on your knees and turn your hips out more. We're now going to stand up from the squat. While you do this, clasp your hands together behind your back and bring them over your head. Now slowly release your hands and walk them over to your left leg. The aim is to put your nose on your knee. Make sure you keep your legs straight while you do this. You can also widen your stance a little as you do this. Now, slowly walk your hands over to the right leg and do the same thing again. Make sure that when you bend and reach for your legs that you always start from the base of your spine. Keep your back straight. Ensure that your shoulders aren't hunched. Now we're going to reach downwards towards the middle. Again, keep that back and your legs straight, even if it means you can't reach as far. It's better to stretch less far in the correct position than overstretch in the wrong position. Now widen your stance slightly, but still keep it at a comfortable point. Now lean down further. Breathe in, and as you breathe out, lean further into the stretch. Each time you breathe out, relax more into the stretch. Release the tensed muscles holding you back. We're now going to prepare for the middle split sit. Sit down and pull your legs back as far as you are comfortable. We want you to ease into this slowly. Now reach forwards from the base of your spine, keeping your back straight the whole time. Make sure your shoulders aren't hunched. It's okay if you can't reach that far down, as long as you feel the stretch. Flexibility will develop over time. You should feel this stretch on the inside of your thighs. Keep your breathing steady. Breathe in and out. And in. And as you breathe out, relax your body. Let it lean into the stretch more without forcing it. Relax the muscles that were holding you back. Your body can stretch further than you think it can. When you stretch, try to push just that little bit further out of your comfort zone. The key to improving is to slowly increase the radius of that comfort zone, but that can't happen if you only stay inside of it.
If you can no longer lean any further, try to rotate your hips forwards and upwards. This deepens the stretch, and doing this action stretches different parts of the muscles. Stay low. We are now going to walk over to a 45 degree angle and reach forwards once again. Keep employing the same breathing techniques of leaning deeper into the stretch when breathing out and releasing the tension in the muscles holding you back. Ensure that your back is straight and your shoulders are not hunched over. We're going to switch sides in just a moment. Remember to walk over slowly with your hands. Some may be scared of the risk of injury with deep stretching, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue if you go slowly and only stretch to where you feel you can. There are two types of pain in exercise and stretching, the good type and the bad type. If it's a slow general pain where you're meant to feel the stretch, that's a sign you're doing it right and stretching the right muscles. What you want to avoid and stop immediately with is sudden, sharp pain. That means you've potentially pulled something that could take much longer to heal if you keep stressing it. Now move your hands above your head and turn towards your left leg so that you are facing it front on. Then reach forwards as far as you can while keeping your leg and back straight. Again, stretching forwards from the base of your spine. You are aiming to put your nose on your knee. When you switch sides, again, turn to face the leg before reaching forwards. I'm making this clarification now because from experience some people will combine this stretch and the next stretch will do, meaning the two different sets of muscles are stretched less specifically and in general just stretch less. This stretch will specifically train your hamstrings for higher front kicks. With this stretch, you want to first bring your arms parallel to the floor and reach for your leg with the opposite hand, with your other arm in front of the leg. Make sure that you keep your body in a vertical line, that you aren't leaning forwards, and try to look up at the ceiling. This stretch isn't for a specific kick, but rather it helps to loosen up your obliques so that in time they won't be limiting the height of your turning kick or side kick. You can now relax slightly and come out of your middle split sit position and do a butterfly stretch to relax your inner thigh muscles. Bounce your legs up and down or maybe try pushing them down with your elbows, whatever you feel like doing. We are just relaxing after that long middle split stretch. And now release tension in your glutes and inner thighs by doing this stretch. I don't really know what it's called. After this stretch, you'll get a well-deserved break, after which we'll come back to work up to a proper middle split.
Are you ready to get back into it? Let's go. Sit back down and get into a wider middle split sitting position. You should feel looser than when you did it earlier. We are now just going to hold this for a bit without leaning too far forwards. Tilt your hip forwards and upwards and try to widen your split. When ready, slowly start inching forwards, but don't push out of your comfort zone until the timer beeps. Now start pushing yourself forwards and down. Make sure that you start the stretch from the base of your spine and that you keep your back straight and shoulders pulled back, making sure they aren't hunched. You want to be sure that your legs are straight and not bent at the knees. If this is an issue, bring your legs closer together slightly. If you bend your legs while leaning forwards, the effect of this stretch is greatly lessened. Remember to keep your breathing steady. You want to push further this time than you did before, and to do this, you must relax your body as well as your mind. You want to make sure you are fully loosened up for the full middle split to decrease chance of injury. It's really important to have the proper amount of rest while doing any stretching routine or workout. It's a chance for your body to recuperate and realise what you are doing. It's almost a way to save your progress to be able to go further. If you constantly stretch in the same position, your body won't have time for the stretch to become its new normal. By taking a rest and removing yourself from that stretch, your body is not under stress and can adjust to the stretch. So that when you go to do the same stretch, you can start at the previous point you ended at. We're now going to do a frog stretch. This is useful for practicing the middle split if your knee joints are painful in a full middle split. Make sure your knee joint and ankle joint are both at 90 degrees and your thighs are in a straight line. Since your muscles will be strong, it's hard for gravity alone to increase your stretch. Try to push yourself towards the ground with your thigh muscles, but don't overexert yourself. Remember that stretching is an active process and you should be constantly trying for self-improvement. If you only stretch passively, you'll get nowhere. Now we're moving on to the main event, the middle split. Use this time to prepare. Now put most of your weight in your hips and let it transmit down through your legs to your feet. The most important things to keep in mind here are keeping your legs straight at the knees and the straight line from foot to foot. Make sure that you aren't tilting either forwards or backwards and support the remainder of your weight with your arms and hands to ensure you aren't straining or overstretching. Slowly sink into the stretch. Keep holding it just a little bit longer. Keep your breathing steady. Now we've got a short break. Relax your muscles before putting them under strain again. We're going to be holding this second middle split for a bit longer, now that your body is used to the stretch. Get in position and ready. Now take a deep breath in, and when you breathe out, sink deep into the middle split. Still only to where you feel you can hold it, but stretch more than before. You might find that you can go further this time, and that's because you've already loosened up all the muscles for this stretch, and they are ready. Concentrate on keeping your form correct. It's most important in the middle splits to ensure that you don't injure yourself. If you don't have much time, a good way to shorten this stretching routine is to warm up and then just do the middle split sit leaning forwards and then two sets of long middle splits. Of course, this does only stretch a small range of muscles, but the middle splits with a small break in between still give surprisingly good results. Make sure that you do warm up first though. The first middle splits is for form, the second is for the actual stretch. Congratulations on making it this far. If you still feel up for it, we're going to work on front splits next.
we're going to start with a long lunge. Make sure you keep your back leg as straight as possible. You should be feeling the stretch on the front of the back thigh. After this is the world's greatest stretch. You put your hands down by your front leg and reach under your leg, then up with the opposite arm. If anyone can tell me why this stretch is called the world's greatest stretch, I'll be very thankful. Put it down in the comments if you know why. Now put your back knee down and ensure that your front knee is bent at roughly 90 degrees. You should be pushing down on your back hip and aiming to feel a stretch on the front of your back thigh. Make sure your hips are facing forwards. This is very important to get the right stretch. Really lean down into this stretch as you're working it against your own muscles wanting to keep you up. This is a kind of cheaty way to progress towards an oversplit. Now move backwards. Straighten your front leg and bend your back knee to about 90 degrees. Bend forwards from the base of your spine. The aim is to put your nose on your knee. But again, you don't want to compromise your form by bending your front leg. It's better to stretch less correctly than overstretch wrongly. Now move forwards into your front split, making sure your hips are facing forward. If you haven't quite got your front splits yet, keep your front leg straight and put the weight of your back leg on the knee. Make sure you have a soft mat to do this on. The limiting factor will be the flexibility of your quads on the back leg. If you put the weight on your back foot, your knee will bend, taking away some of the stretch, so you're not getting to your full potential. We're just going to hold this stretch for a while. It's okay if your arms start to get tired from partly supporting your weight. Anyone would be tired at this point. Just try your best to keep going and take breaks as necessary. Now, turn your back foot into a side kick chamber position. Look on screen for the alternative stretch. Try to push your hips in as much as possible so your legs are in a straight line. What we are doing is conditioning the side kick while on the ground, as this is the exact position you take whilst doing the kick. We're doing this so that you get the flexibility practice in without having to hold your leg up in the actual kick. Theoretically, you should be able to do a higher side kick after this. Now, bend forwards and reach for your front leg. You can return your back foot to normal. This is to train for a higher front kick by stretching out your hamstrings. Again, look on screen if you haven't yet got your front splits. Now, the final front split stretch is to look backwards. This is to train your obliques for the correct position they will be in for both turning kicks and side kicks. You wouldn't be looking at the ground, but rather to the side. Try to make your body perpendicular to the floor. And relax. This is a well-deserved break. After this, we'll get right back with the same stretches for the other leg. You want to make sure you always stretch evenly. You might want to relax your hamstrings as I'm doing in the video or go for a walkabout and get some water. Whatever feels right to you. Are you ready? Let's get back into it. Starting again with the long lunge, focusing the stretch on the back quads. I usually tell people, myself included, to start whatever it is, the splits, kicks, with the bad leg as you naturally spend more time on it the first time around. 
but since this is a timed stretch routine, it shouldn't matter too much. It is still something you should keep in mind though. Back to the world's greatest stretch. I'm still not personally convinced it is. You know the drill, you've done the other leg. Put your knee down and make sure your centre of gravity is in front of that knee. Remember to push down on the back hip and keep your hips facing forward. You can move your front leg forwards for a deeper stretch because you're relying less on muscles to keep you up and you're letting gravity do its work. To be honest, at this point in narration, I'm really hoping you've put some music on in the background. I'm hoping you aren't just listening to my voice, because I'm running out of things to say that I haven't already. Make sure you keep your hips facing forward. Once again, ease into your front splits. The alternative stretch for if you haven't got your front splits yet is going to pop up on the screen. Keep the same breathing techniques going. Make sure your breathing is steady and relax into the stretch little by little. Keep going. I know it feels like a long time while doing the stretch, but it's always not as long as you think. Turn your back foot into a side kick chambered position. Try to keep the back leg as straight as possible. For this reason, it's better to do a side lunge if you haven't got your front splits yet, to focus on the kicking leg of the side kick. Turn your body to the side and rotate your hips inwards. Essentially, you should be tucking your butt in. Your legs should be in a straight line. This is, for all intents and purposes, doing a side kick, but on the ground. Now reach for your front leg once again. You can return your back foot to its original position. Now turn so that you're looking at your back foot or at the wall behind your back foot. You'll get a well-deserved long break after this. We're now going into the pigeon pose. This next set of stretches is aimed at your glutes, specifically to loosen them so you can do crazy crescent kicks. After this, you're going to bring your front leg out to around about 90 degrees, wherever is most comfortable for you. I've tried to make this routine as comprehensive and specific to Taekwondo as possible, 
so that in future you can refer back to it and pick and choose the parts most relevant to you. And if you've managed to get here from the beginning, I'm very proud of you. We're on the home straight and almost done. Only do this next move if you feel able, otherwise stay where you are. You're going to move over slowly so that you are leaning over your foot. You want to try and push your belly button through to the ground in front of your foot. Now, obviously that's impossible, but this is one technique that you can employ to try and keep your back straight while you're doing this sort of stretch. You should feel this stretch quite strongly on the inside of your thigh. Now we're going to take a quick break to prepare for the next stretch. It's quite a strong glute stretch if you do it right. Ensure the heel of your foot is on the top of the opposite knee. You should feel quite a strong stretch in your glute area, and if you can't, then try to readjust your position until you can feel it. Keep holding just a bit longer. Now bring your lower leg up with your ankle now on the knee instead. You can gently rock from side to side if you wish to. As we're coming towards the end of this routine, we're essentially doing a cool down. We'll do this by progressively doing gentler stretches until we finish. Now we've got a quick break before we go on to do the pigeon pose and other stretches on the other leg. You'll probably be quite tired at this point but remember to keep moving so that you don't become cold or stiff. Ready? Let's get back into the pigeon pose. Remember to do it on your other leg this time. It's not quite the same stretch as a front split, despite looking very similar. You should instead be focusing on the outer thigh, or glutes, of the front leg instead of the front thigh, or quads of the back leg. This means your hips don't necessarily have to be facing forward. Bring your front leg out to about 90 degrees. Now move to stretch over your front foot if you feel you're able to. You should be feeling the stretch on the back of your thigh in the glute area. And now we've got a quick 10 second break to prepare for the next stretch, the meditation. That's probably not its actual name. There are only so many things you can get away with naming a glute stretch before it gets too much. But this is indeed a glute stretch and you should be able to feel the stretch in the glute area.
We're now going to do the stretch I've actually called the glute stretch. So bring your lower leg up. Congratulations, you've almost made it to the end. We've only got two gentle stretches left. We're first going to release tension in our glutes and then we will finish off with a butterfly. Use this rest time to stretch whichever muscles you feel necessary. Alright, we're almost at the finish line. If you've made it this far, let us know how you found it in the comments and share the video if you found it helpful. If you want more content from CUTKD, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel and let us know what you would like to see more of. Other than that, I'll let you enjoy the last stretch in peace and quiet.